this focus on the criminal justice reform has really taken a lot of the attention, a lot of the oxygen away from what's happening in Congress on coronavirus. And, and that is both, you know, it's both understandable because of the historic nature of the, the, uh, the protests that have followed the death of George Floyd, but also, also, you know, the Republicans were not going to move on this anyways. Um, the House Democrats have passed uh, their fourth bill, this huge $3 trillion HEROES Act, they're calling it which is you know, more of what we've seen in the past, state, uh, state and local money, uh, almost a trillion dollars for them. It's another check for individuals and families. It's more unemployment insurance. It's, you know, the list goes on and on. You can just go down and tick off the, the things that, um, that we saw in the past, and it's just more funding for all of those buckets. Um, Mitch McConnell and the Republicans in the Senate have said all along, we're not gonna do anything until we know exactly what we need, and, and until all of that money from the from the first CARES Act, the first $2.2 trillion bill that we passed in when it was on late March, um, until all that money's out the door, we are we see no need to do anything on it. And so that has been their position. And kind of bolstering that position, last week, the Labor Department issued its uh, May jobs report and uh, revealing to many, to the surprise of uh, many economists that the, the economy created two and a half million jobs in May. Um, so what does that mean? Well, politically, it means that, um, that there's not a lot of pressure on Republicans in the Senate to rush out and, and deliver more federal aid if the economy is creating jobs on its own, uh, which has been their argument all along as the recovery happens as states uh, reopen. Right now, according to this poll, right now, according to these numbers, what we're seeing is about a fifth of households are having trouble meeting normal expenses. I'm not exactly sure how that compares to the prior period, so that would be an interesting comparison. But one thing that I think is really important to note in the other kinds of data that we're seeing are that at this point, at least in the April data, which is the latest data we have, we have not seen people's income, at least on average, drop in this recession. And that has a lot to do with the fact that the federal government has really stepped in to provide people aid to sustain income. So like the, the, the checks that came out, the stimulus checks, that there was just one time, so it won't last forever, but it mattered a lot to a lot of households. And then the other key thing the federal government has done is step in to bump up the amount of benefits people get when they're getting unemployment insurance. Usually it's extremely stingy. Our regular UI benefits, unemployment insurance benefits, replace a maximum of half of your prior salary, but up to these very low caps. And so most people actually get much lower than half of their prior salary. So if we had been seeing the millions of people that have lost their jobs and are having no choice but to rely on unemployment insurance benefits, if they didn't have that extra $600 per week in unemployment insurance benefits, that, the, that Congress passed that is in place right now, they would have had to see huge cuts in their spending. And I think we would see much larger um, numbers of households in the polling data saying, I can't pay my mortgage. I can't, I can't get food on the table. I can't cover basic expenses. So at this point, I do think what we're seeing is the federal relief is maintaining people's incomes to a huge degree and we're not yet seeing people at least those who have access to that kind of aid we're not yet seeing big declines in the income one big problem is a lot of that is set to expire soon the we got the may numbers for the total number of jobs in the economy it was a big surprise i like like many people expected there to be a, another big decline in jobs. Instead, we saw an increase, and that's really good news for working people. It's, it was That was extremely good news. The problem is, is that that's sort of where the good news ends, because the hole that we're in is still absolutely enormous. 
So we added 2.5 million jobs in um, May, but we had lost more than 22 million jobs in the prior two months. So we are still down almost 20 million jobs in the economy. And one of the threats of having this good job report is that it may make policymakers complacent. It may make them say, look, the economy is fixing itself. We don't really need to do anything. And that is deeply misguided. It is, we we always knew we'd get some really strong months. It happened earlier than I expected, but we knew as the, as the economy reopens, we'd see these you know people going back to work and it would show up as big job growth. But we also know that we have done enormous damage. And those people who are going back to work, that once that, that, that flood of people going back to work that can go back to work, once that has stopped, we are still going to have an extremely high unemployment rate unless the federal government really steps in with more aid.